Kopi Luwak production begins with harvesting coffee beans from the coffee tree. The coffee tree, also called kafia, is a very rampant plant in the Indonesian tropical forests. And at the bottom of the mature ones, you'd find circular red fruits which dropped from the tree. These fruits are called coffee cherries, and they are picked by farmers and taken to local coffee producers who extract the seeds from the fruits. Normally, these seeds are dried and ground before being sold to coffee houses worldwide. However, for Kopi Luwak, the coffee seeds are made to undergo a special fermentation process. This fermentation involves a furry cat-like animal called a civet. The coffee producers cage these civets and on a standard coffee production site in Indonesia, there are about 50 of them. These animals are special because their favorite snacks are coffee cherries. But since they cannot digest the coffee seeds, they pass them out in their feces. Although the animals cannot digest these seeds, they are exposed to a series of enzymatic actions while in the animal's digestive system. Within 24 hours of ingesting the coffee cherries, the stomach of a civet separates the seeds from the fleshy part of the cherries, and the seeds are exposed to stomach acid, stomach enzymes, and a series of fermentation processes. All of these alter the amino acid composition of the seeds, which enhances the taste and aroma of the coffee beans as they undergo other stages of production. After staying a full day in the civet's digestive systems, the seeds are passed out as feces. And this is where the whole thing gets really gross. Yeah, we haven't gotten to the grossest part yet. The coffee producers extract the beans from the feces of the animals, but thankfully, the seeds are passed out in clusters, which makes them easy to extract. After taking out the coffee bean poo-poo from the cages of the civets, the beans are arranged on sacks, spread in the sun, and left to dry for a few hours. They haven't even rinsed them off yet. Next, the beans are washed thoroughly and several times to achieve two things. First, to separate the clusters into individual pieces of beans, and secondly, and most importantly, to get rid of whatever germ the beans may have accumulated while in the digestive system of the civet. The process of washing an animal's poop is not pleasant, so the coffee producers are required to wear gloves and nose masks. But at the end of the day, they're paid handsomely for doing such a dirty job. Next, the decluttered beans are dried. On big farms, they're dried using large tumblers which double as drying machines. While in a more local setting, the beans are placed on large trays and taken to a spot where the intensity of the sun is at its highest, which could be at the top of the civet cages. After drying for a few hours, the resulting beans are known as parchment coffee and are aerated before being prepared for exportation. Before they are exported, the parchment coffee beans are graded and sorted according to color, size, weight, and flaws. An air jet is used to separate the light beans from the heavy ones, while different screens and sieves sort the beans into different sizes. Defected beans are removed by hand or with a machine, depending on the size of the farm, and only those that meet the standards are packaged and exported. At this point, the beans are referred to as green coffee, and they are portioned into sacks, loaded onto ships or trucks, and transported to purchasers worldwide. When the green coffee arrives at the coffee shops, some of the beans are sampled and tasted by a process referred to as cupping. First, the taster evaluates the beans based on their physical characteristics, and a few selected ones are roasted in a small laboratory roaster, ground, and brewed in boiling water. Before tasting the freshly made coffee, the taster judges the quality of the coffee based on the aroma it gives off. For Kopi Luwak, the coffee is also evaluated based on its acidity because it is expected to be less acidic than regular coffee. Under normal conditions, Kopi Luwak passes the taste test because unlike regular coffee, the civets have a talent for picking and digesting the ripest coffee cherries. Therefore, coffee brewed from beans from civet feces tastes and smells better than coffee made using less gross techniques. The tasting occurs in batches, and each batch proceeds to the next phase only after being approved by the taster. 
A professional taster can taste as many as 100 coffee batches per day and still be able to spot the difference between each one. Wow, they must have to go to the bathroom a lot. That's a lot of coffee. After tasting, the next production stage is roasting, which converts the green coffee to the aromatic brown coffee that is sold in coffee shops. The beans are placed in roasting machines, which are preheated to a temperature of about 550 degrees Fahrenheit. And once inside the machines, the beans are kept in constant motion to prevent them from burning. When the beans reach an internal temperature of about 400 degrees, they begin to turn brown and exude a fragrant oil called caffeol. This is very important because if the beans are not properly roasted, the aroma and taste will be adversely affected. Roasting generally occurs at coffee shops because freshly roasted coffee has to reach the customers as quickly as possible. After they've been roasted, the beans are cooled either by air or water before they are taken to the next production phase, grinding. The powdered coffee is brewed in hot water to extract the soluble coffee flavors. And the smoother the coffee beans are ground, the faster the coffee can be extracted. This is why you need fine coffee powder if you want to make a quick shot of espresso. Coarse coffee powders are used for other kinds of coffee, like a pour over or a French press. The different and superior taste of Kopi Luwak is quite distinct, and you don't have to be a professional taster to tell the difference between a cup of Kopi Luwak and regular coffee. Unfortunately, this specially made coffee is not readily available to everyone because of its hefty price tag. In some parts of the US, the coffee is sold for $220 per kilogram. And if you're still wondering why it's that expensive, ask yourself if anyone would pick beans out of poop unless they're being paid a lot of money to do it. I will say, I live in Vietnam, and there's a cafe here with Kopi Luwak, with freshly made Kopi Luwak, with civets available to look at at the cafe, and it doesn't cost that much. The coffee is also more expensive in the US because civets do not exist in large numbers in this part of the world. So the fact that the Kopi Luwak is exported from other countries also factors into the price tag. In Asian countries like Indonesia, however, Civic coffee is available for about $30, which is cheaper than in the US, but also more expensive than regular coffee. Do you think Kopi Luwak is superior to other kinds of coffee? I've tried it myself, but there isn't that big of a difference, and not sure I'd recommend it for everyone. Leave your answer in the comments section below.